Well, hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Live with Naz, quarantining in Corona, California. This is episode number 268. Yes, 268. How many things in life you've done for 268 hours other than eating and the other stuff you do daily? But I mean, this is, a, this is commitment, people. This is what I call commitment. I am committed to you. You've been committed to me. Most of you have been committed to me. And I love it. Sarah, hello. Becky. Becky Voth uh, from Washington is here with us on her own device. Uh, on her own accord, too. Come on, everyone. Welcome. Hello. Yes, 2 plus 6 is 8. That's, that's public school math right there. Hello, Bobby Miller. Mr. Amazon. You know what happened in New York and Amazon? Your Fitbit will have a fit. That's what happened. You get, they're going to walk you 20, 30,000 uh, steps every day. So if you want to be on a diet, join Amazon. They pay you to lose weight. All righty. Let's see. Who else is here? Hello from Cheesy, Wisconsin. Mr. Matthew Dirks, how are you? Amy is with us. Another Amazon. My feet are tired employee. And let's see what we got. Uh, thank you. This is the best use of an hour, I think, Naz. Thank you so much, Sarah, for your support. And Becky Ottenberry from beautiful Louisiana, Cajun country, is with us. Bobby Miller is here, Sarah. Uh, Rita, Rita from Tennessee. Rita has been so gracious to provide some of the questions that we use every night. So thank you, Rita. All right, who else is here? Art. Art is here. He is committed in Cambodia. This is our traveling man, and he is still in San Marcos, if you're new to us. Alan Goodwin, happy Monday to you, my brother. How are you? And let's see. My mom doesn't have a Honda Naz, so not on her own accord. Get it. <laughs> All righty. Welcome, 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 welcome. Good to see you, people. All righty. Melissa. Melissa Canchola. Hello, Melissa, a new friend, or has been with us. It's been a while since we saw you. Uh, either one, let us know. City and state, that's all we ask. It's my Friday night. I'm off tomorrow from Amazon. That's awesome. 17,671 steps, people, just for work. If you sit in an office, you're jealous. All righty. Let's see who else. We have some people. Who is, who is joining us right now from, uh, let's see, two... 268 from YouTube people. Welcome our YouTube friends. Thank you for joining us. If you want to comment in the time being, just go to, did I say time being? Did I say being? Time being. Time being. You know, uh, you can join us on um, Facebook or Javier will be able to copy your questions and do it. This chord or that chord? The other chord. I was going to say something about that, huh? I'm a sub I'm in suburbia. Becky Wolf, suburbia. <laughs> All right, let's see, let's see. We have Martina's here. Hello, Martina. I mean, okay, tomorrow, people, you don't want to miss this, because my guest tomorrow on the podcast, show number eighty-three, is going to be Diana Batista. Diana is a wonderful, wonderful young single lady. Uh, from Southern California, goes to my church. God put on her heart to move to Pattaya. Pattaya is the capital of the sex trafficking of the world in Thailand. The worst place to where sex trafficking is public. Big time. So, she decided to move there. She's a hairdresser. And she decided to open a store and do a ministry to help people get out of sex trafficking by teaching them a trade to take these young men and women who are sold on the streets uh, because that's all they know how to make money she teaches them how to do hair and other things and then so they're able to leave sex trafficking and have some dignity wonderful lady she's going to be up at four in the morning to be able to to be on the show with us at 2 p.m tomorrow pacific time so please join us live if you have any questions for her you can answer uh, and uh, we have to be careful with whatever we ask her because 
She's not in the U.S. She's somewhere else. Well, nowadays in the U.S. you have to be careful. Uh, yeah, we're no longer free as we think we are, people. That whole freedom of speech is like... Uh, mm. It's not, trust me. There's no freedom of speech anymore. Well, to a degree, but... You know, in, in Middle East, you can lose your head for saying something wrong here. You get canceled. Eh, still not bad. They, you know, they cancel your social media. Eh, still, you're still alive. You can always restart a new social media somewhere else. Move away and find an, a smaller a smaller platform and, and start your own social media. But still, eh, no freedom of speech. Uh, yes. I walk around, around, around. All right. Okay. So last. can even find the key. Sometimes my mom can't even find the key. All righty. So uh, last Friday, uh, what did I do this weekend? I had on Saturday, oh, we had a friend of mine. They came. Maha's friend wanted to surprise her and buy her Get, you know, drop a gift. But what happened, the moment she was trying to send me the text to say, hey, uh, I want to surprise Maha on Saturday, Maha had my phone and I told her to pick a sweater because I bought a couple shirts and I said, if you buy over 70 bucks, you get free shipping. So I said, honey, you want to buy something? While she's doing it, God's timing, her friend is like, Naz, don't tell Maha. See, this could have been dangerous in a, in a different setting. But uh, we're Christians and we're solid and she can read anything on my phone. So she, anyway, it wasn't a surprise, but we had a great time. And then we went tennis, playing tennis with Tally and my, her, my niece. And then on Sunday, my friend's birthday. So we went to, and the beautiful thing is I was able to, there were about 30 people and it kind of geared the conversation from fun to, talking about Jesus, which was amazing. Praise God. That should be always your goal. When you're in a group of people, at the end of the day, how can I, how can I let them know the great thing that God did in my life? Melissa, we have had the, the threat to understand my mom. Okay. All right. Share, share, share. Is it eight for, it's, it can be seven. No, not yet. Seven. Did Amazon have the walk around in circles again? Yes. Betty is here. Hello, Betty Hardy. How are you? It's been a while. Well, last week I asked you the question. Uh, excuses why you didn't file your taxes. I was able to get eight. I was able to get eight thanks to Facebook. Number, t uh, number eight, because of COVID-19. Number seven, what taxes? Number six. I didn't work that whole 2020. Number five, my dog ate my tax return. Number four, the IRS is on lockdown. Number three, life happens and you don't want to face the tax man. Number two, still waiting for my stimulus checks. And the number one reasons why you didn't file taxes. Hey, I'm afraid to catch COVID. That's right, Lily. It's Lily one, top eight. How about that? All right, let's see. Amy, uh, I'm thinking of the surprise can only be for a guy, you know? Sir, prize. Oh, I get it. Ernie Aguirre, good to see you from North Hills in Claremont. How are you? Thank you, Ernie, for joining us. All right, and Jane, Jane Sizemore is with us here. Hello, Jane. Welcome. All right, I don't mess with taxes. <laughs> Okay, your first question for the night is, well, let's see, uh, this came from Rita, and the thing is, you're at the altar, and you change your mind, what do you say? You're at the altar, you're ready to get married, and you change your mind, what do you say? I was hoping my miracle grow would make it, but you used a different question, oh well. Oh yeah, for the grass, congrats. All right. <laughs> oh, wait, guys, behind me is a guy running. I have to show you that. Let me see if you can, if you can see the guy behind me. Why am I, here we go. Maybe I should do this. Okay, how about that? 
is the guy appearing. Can you hear me now? Ah, see, I, I should go to the chiropractor. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> okay, I altered my mind. <laughs> that's good, just kidding. Whoops, I did it again. <laughs> My aunt is here to stop the wedding. <laughs> is he a run guy as opposed to a fun guy? Run guy. Still need to do some alteration. Here is this is this question came from Rita, and this is her uh, some of her answers. I gotta go. I have a pot roast in the oven. Who are you? Where am I? <laughs> uh, I forgot my mommy's permission. Hey, Reverend, wanna have a beer right after? <laughs> So, what's your excuse, you know, at the altar? You're at the altar and you change your mind. You're at the altar and you changed, change your mind. What do you say? Okay, let open, oh, no, no, pin, pin, pin. Uh, I keep my running shoes just in case. Runaway groom. I'm just a stand-in groom. Isles. I'll need to think about that some more. Oh, no, I can't hear you. <laughs> Still need to do some alteration. Look, oops, wrong church. <laughs> the bed just isn't worth it anymore. What was I thinking to marry this jerk? <laughs> okay. Let's see. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, there's a way I, I think you can, um, you can go to Facebook and comment or if you want to write your comments down, uh, have your Scott with laughter for all. We'll, we'll copy them on Facebook so we can read them for you. We got about 109 people watching right now. This is awesome. Thank you, guys. If you're new to our show, welcome to our show. This is the Live with Nas show. been going on since the pandemic started last March. We, our goal is to make you laugh. We're going to ask you questions like this one and just give us a funny answer. And the question is, you're at the altar and you change your mind. What do you say? And by the way, if, you were, if this happened to you, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Okay, let's see. Here's some funny answers. I want to marry someone else. Hey, her bad breath. I, mean, I think Siri gave me the directions to the wrong location. <laughs> I need to go get my vaccine. <laughs> Good one, Martina. Catherine Allen, welcome. Someone say fire. Okay, Mon Montezuma's revenge. <laughs> I got cold everything. I thought you said you wanted a carriage. <laughs> Just got a call from Geico. I can save 15% if I ch change insurance right now. You don't like li <laughs> you don't look like your online profile picture. Now, and you're married again. <laughs> Lily, I don't know. Lily just joined. Did you know, Lily, you have the number one answer for the top eight? It wasn't top 20 because Facebook did something. Live with Naz, best show ever. Thank you. You're not the mail order bride I asked for. <laughs> I need to go take a beauty break. I object. <laughs> All right. That's, you can say that. The pastor said you could do better to your dad. I think I hear my mom calling me. <laughs> Keep the veil on. You got a deal. <laughs> All right, let's sanitize every 15 minutes, people. Since the pandemic started on this show, we support sanitizing your hand. We also encourage you to share this. If 109 of you share it right now, we'll have a lot of people. So, you know, sanitize and click the share button. All right. I'm missing my TV show. <laughs> I'm gay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you told that on wedding night. I'm gay. Sorry, I got to go. Hey, you can take off your mask now. <laughs> I can't afford you. My grandmother has her special soup on hold for me. 
Oh, I was only kidding. I am go to fall off the altar. <laughs> oh, I plead the fifth. <laughs> the magic eight ball just said no. I need someone with teeth. <laughs> That's funny. All righty. Oh, heck no, I can't. You're not the woman of my dreams. <laughs> oh, heck no, I can't. <laughs> All righty. Knights of the 21st century. I got this sweater when I did a men's conference in Pennsylvania, somewhere in Pennsylvania, where the knights of the 21st century live there. Ooh. Chris Rosetti, look, a ram. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh are, you, are you referring to Abraham and Isaac for a replacement? <laughs> is that it? Naz is officially the wedding. Officiating the wedding is going to take way too long. <laughs> I only did one wedding in my life, and it wasn't long. You don't cook. Deal breaker. <laughs> all righty, all righty. If you're joining us on YouTube or other other channels, welcome, welcome to the show. That's called a hoodie, not a sweater. I don't know. What if the hoodie is not there? If you can't see it. See, it's a sweater. It's a hoodie. Hoodie. I don't know why they call it a hoodie because people in the hood wearing it. I don't know. It's cold today in the Southland. Cold. It's about 65 today. I was freezing. The cable guy is coming anywhere from 2021 to 2028. Ah, I object. Wait a minute. You're my cousin. <laughs> hey, Chris. <laughs> Betty again confirms I'm gay. <laughs> Naz, it's a hoodie, a.k.a. ad hooded sweater. What? I didn't know that. Is that the truth? Huh. My mom took me out of it. <laughs> I'm allergic to rice. <laughs> I don't want to marry my cousin. Uh, by the way, why do you call two spiders that just got married newlyweds? <laughs> What happened to if a spider's husband dies, she becomes a black widow, right? But if he's still alive, she's just a, a spider. Wow. So she becomes scarier when he's dead. What if he's still breathing? She's not a black widow yet. He has to be completely dead. Sweater is made out of yarn. Yarn? And what is this? Sweater made out of yarn. Okay, I've seen your house and I don't want to be your new maid. <laughs> My ex says you can do better. <laughs> yes, the term hoodie is a nickname for a hooded sweatshirt. Hooded. Oh, hooded. With a hood. 65 in Corona, be grateful. I know. I have a hangover. I forgot to feed the cat. <laughs> I'm allergic to your dogs. I know you won't get rid of it, so now I got to go. Nope, I had a dream about this day and it doesn't end well. I hate spiders. What if the spider wife was blonde and her husband dies? Would she be a blonde window? widow? <laughs> I don't know. Uh. <laughs> Bobby, it's 47 per degrees in Rialto. Ooh, I thought hoodie meant that you grew up in the hood. That's what I thought. I think I left the stove on. I gotta go. Suck it up. You're a buttercup. <laughs> Again, people, you want to see the guy running from the altar. Here you go. You know why this happened? Because I did the backgrounds today. I taught myself how to do the backgrounds. I had to do everything. So John and Tally, if they're not here, I can do the whole show by myself. So I'm, 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 I'm getting to that point where I can do the show by myself. 
So, um, but I normally have to put the picture of the groom on the right, but I didn't. It's okay. No, I'm just grateful. Oh, <laughs> good one, Ellen. What if the spider wife was blonde and her husband, would she be called a blonde widow? He said, no, just grateful. I forgot the rings permanently. He got cold feet, yes. Recurring ni nightmare, living the same one over and over and over. Can't wake up. Uh, then she'd be a black widow. She becomes a brown reckless. It's 54 degrees in Hemet. I got to tell you, I'm missing my favorite soap operas. That's why I have to leave the altar. All right, who's in Hemet? Oh, Joey, Joey Stilson, mom and dad, who were with us for many months in the beginning of the show. And uh, they're from Hemet, California. I forgot. Okay, my dress is too tight and so are you. <laughs> You're just too high maintenance for me. This cougar won't stop chasing me. <laughs> All right. How are JP? JP? JP. Okay. My. All right. Let's see. Are we good with the question? Should we change the question? Yes, we are changing the question. The next question, ladies and gentlemen, is this also came from Rita. Okay, Casey is with us from YouTube. Hello, Casey. Here's the next question, people. The question is, explain why you failed your driver's license test. Explain why you failed your driver's license test. Why did you fail your driver's license test? Where is it? You're just a gold digger. Anyway, will this be the only time I have to say I do to you? I don't want to go to the moon, honey. <laughs> I thought it was by mail. I can't see the girl. Uh, she's not there. Sorry, my keyboard is acting up. No, i ask you how Joey's parents. I think they're fine. Driver's instruction didn't wear their seat belt. Okay, let me see where where my question is. I put the question, explain why, and it didn't go through. Let's see, explain why you failed your driver's exam. Driving instructor, doing, driver's instruction didn't wear his seatbelt. Bad vision. I thought R stood for race. I brake too fast to stop sign. All right, hello, Michael Ramirez. My song was too loud. I slammed on the brakes and the driving instructor took a flight. Here's what the answers uh, Rita came for. R does not mean really fast. Soft shoulders does not apply to me. A spare tire does apply to me. A flashing red light doesn't mean you, you wear out your brakes. <laughs> the driving instructor kept on singing stop in the name of love, but I didn't. I'm a NASCAR driver. Charlotte Ann Abshire, how are you? I passed the written one first try. Haven't taken the driving one yet. I have to buy a flasher extension. <laughs> Extensions. Oh, he didn't like the beer in my cup holder. <laughs> he told me to stop at the stop sign. I did. <laughs> or you didn't. I only turned left. All right, stickers on my rear view mirror. That's why. All right, let's see. I was answering the failed driver's question. I thought it was better mail. I drove too fast and hit a car. There was a guy running all over the road, so I hit him. I wanted to show off my drifting skills. <laughs> I drove my car like I stole it. Uh, the instructor didn't like all the car chases I did. 
Randall Warner from Green Bay, how are you, brother? Won't let me take the test by mail. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the stop sign to turn green. Okay, explain why you failed your driver's license test and pin it. Good. Now we can do that. Driver instructor was upset from fighting with boyfriend <laughs> while you're driving. Oh, I'm still waiting for the stop sign to turn green. Well, John Riscala is not here. It's me, Mr. Engineer Nazareth now. Almost doing the whole show. All I need is someone to start the show and then I, I got it. Oh, look at me. This is This should be right there. Driver's instructor was upset from fighting with boyfriend. Uh, let's see. I thought I was playing the game <laughs> Grand Theft Auto. The instructor didn't like my rolling <laughs> California stop. Yeah, in California, you don't stop. You kind of just roll and you go through it. Okay, let's see. Have you heard Casey? Do you use Facebook? Yes. I will go to Facebook and check it out. All right, Casey. Thank you. Casey is coming from YouTube to to join us. Best as can be under circumstances. She is a great prayer warrior where God wants her right now. And new grandma. <laughs> I am colorblind and I got confused at the light. I like <laughs> closing one eye. <laughs> Too much sign language with other drivers. <laughs> I was talking on my cell phone while I was driving around. I have my instructor. A I gave my instructor a heart attack. I consider the speed limit as a suggestion. All right. Sleep narcolepsy took over. Uh, referring to Linda Stilson. Oh, Linda. What happened? Bessie. Yes, Linda, Linda, we should have him back. Linda and Jay Stilson and their son, Joey, is with us. He's a professional chef. Even though I won, the instructor didn't appreciate the street races. Driving in stuck structure. Oh, you didn't like my song, Reds on Top, Green Below. Red means stop, green means go, yellow means wait, even if you're late. <laughs> I never heard that song. Driving instructor kept drawing circles on his clipboard. I thought that means to me <laughs> to do donuts with the car. <laughs> That's funny, Bobby. Applying too much makeup. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. I have a meeting to attend. All right, Martina. Thank you so much for joining us. Evidently, the instructor doesn't like donuts. All right, I like to be able to read license plates close up. <laughs> Driver instructor believes in having you take the test twice, all for job security. <laughs> That's, <laughs> you convince yourself with that, right, Elena? All righty. It's eight o'clock, ladies and gentlemen. It is time to sanitize. We have 109 people right now. 109, if you all sanitize and share right now, even if you don't have a sanitizer, you can share. Even if you don't have a share, just use your computer t to let your friends know about this show. I don't know. Remember tomorrow we have a f on my podcast at 2 p.m. My friend Diana from Thailand. She fights sex trafficking in Pattaya. She is going to be on the show with us. Four in the morning her time, 2 p.m. Pacific time. So join us. You get to talk to her if you want, uh, ask her questions, and all that. Alrighty, let's see. Turned out, turned on the heater in the summertime. He didn't appreciate it. I asked this driving instructor, why do you keep carrying a broom with you? <laughs> oh, I somehow got my instructor high. <laughs> uh, yes, get me to the church on time. Didn't like the scenic route we took. <laughs> that's good, Matthew. Oh, that's funny. I was smoking. 
Yeah, I think my test when and I took it in Ohio in 1984, and I think I was smoking, and he didn't like that. And uh, I failed the first one, got the second one. So let's see. Good. <laughs> Uh, turn out the heater, sanitize. I went through the drive through at McDonald's and tell her I will buy her iced coffee to pass the drive tents. That's bribing. I'm blind. <laughs> Charlotte said, uh, he didn't like me. <laughs> My bus driver said yellow mean floor it. I'm surprised he even <laughs> had a license. Was it a yellow bus, Charlotte? <laughs> I like the off-road. I was driving a Tesla, so the car drove by itself. Can you imagine going on with a Tesla and let the car drive? Did not like the bribe I offered of cheese. <laughs> Best as can be under the circumstances. Is a great prayer warrior work. Yeah, okay, yes, she is. Answer a call while drinking. <laughs> My car too crowded with dogs. <laughs> I really like shoulders. I took the test for an 18-wheeler. <laughs> Instructor doesn't like pedal to the metal. <laughs> Kathleen Cosby, how are you? Welcome. Okay, move from YouTube to Facebook. Casey, thank you so much. You're so kind. Let us know where you're at. What city and state, Casey? All right. Pulled into in and out The question is, Give us, explain why you failed your driver's license test. All righty. Pulled into in and out <laughs> I had to use the restroom really bad, and I had to make it right away. Oh, no. It's time for Guinness. I need that toilet paper. <laughs> we will in a minute still. Turn... On ways for directions. <laughs> he didn't like the parts of my car were failing off as we were driving. Oh, failed before leaving the parking lot. <laughs> Shane, welcome back. Shane Richards. My windshield wipers do not work. Horn is faulty. Brakes are bad. No side mirror. No air conditioning. <laughs> Blinkers don't work. Uh, let's see. Brake lights are out. Tailpipe blows out black smoke. I yelled at every other car I passed and he did not feel safe. I wonder why. <laughs> why wouldn't he feel safe, Shane? How did he let you out in the parking lot with that car? Driving instructor asked me to go up the hill. I thought that means going off-road in 4 by 4 <laughs> I showed up in a four-wheeler. <laughs> My car wouldn't start, and he didn't want to get out and push. <laughs> Missouri, Kathleen, Casey from Missouri. I don't think we have friends. You're our first one in Missouri. We have Arkansas. We have Louisiana. We have Wisconsin. We have New Jersey. We have uh, Pittsburgh. We have Florida. We have uh, uh, Boston, Massachusetts. We have California, Nevada. Ms. Nashville right now and Utah and we also have Washington State of course and Portland so we don't have Missouri good thank you I showed up in a d dune buggy sped in a school zone <laughs> chasing ambulance are apparently not allowed <laughs> I didn't know I needed a car I did it virtually the driving instructor did not appreciate the evil Knievel moves. I kicked the instructor out of the car because I thought Michael would be a better instructor. Sure. I needed to run a few errands. Ran out of gas. Jane, how are you? I was talking too much. Uh, no gas. The light pole came right at my car and hit it. Oh. How that happens. I heard of that happening. Road rage. <laughs> Can you imagine having road rage on your driver's test? That's hilarious. 
<laughs> I asked to take the test at Dave and Buster's. I thought it was supposed to be on Zoom. <laughs> Uh, I showed up for the test with a scooter. I took a rooster with me. We have Azusa. Stopped to let instructor use bathroom. It was a drive through He didn't say, wait, milkshake, and I'm gone. <laughs> the show me state. All right, yes. Uh, I did events in Missouri. Let's see. Where? Actually, we did something with the... Yes, I went through with the temptation. We went through uh, South Carolina and then Missouri. Uh, being the lead car in a police chase is not allowed. Took too many beauty breaks. I thought I was supposed to do a ride along. <laughs> Had a picture of Nez wearing leggings. Not a good idea. Nope. I brought my dad's motorcycle for the test. I was so accurate that I went through every single pothole. <laughs> Driver refused to get in my pinto. Uh, I accidentally braked up over the driving instructor when he said, show me how you back up. Ah, I left the instructor in the dust. <laughs> Maybe St. Louis. Yes, St. Louis. Yeah. Is that where the the arch is? I think yeah, I did an uh, I did an event on a boat in the river where the arch is. I had highway to hell playing as he and he wanted no part of it. <laughs> Alrighty, give me some explain why you failed your driver's test. Uh, let's see. Evidently, the instructor wasn't impressed with me breaking the landscape record. The instructor may or may not have had, had a contract out on him. I may or may not have been the one to fill said contract. Okay. Yes, the arch. Yes, I did. I've been to the arch. I took pictures there, got on the boat, did a comedy show on the boat. Beautiful state. Back up. You went to Missouri with a temptation. How did that end? Well, there's no temptation that is new to man, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. But in that temptation, he provide a way of escape that the man of God might be able to hold it, handle it. And I handle it with the temptation, opening for that temptation. Man, one of them was the original one. And the three were, you know, been with him for a while. One of them is a believer. He's from Nevada. A great guy. I connected so well with that guy. And the older guy, I think he passed away a few years ago. It was bad. He was, it was not, I mean, the shows were great. The guy, three of the guys were wonderful. <laughs> There's also an arch in my foot, just saying. I forgot to clear off the tack. The tags from his seat. I ran over the instructor's feet. Me, I didn't see the stop sign instructor. Maybe because it was facing the other way. You were on the one-way street. <laughs> I called shotgun and gave him the keys. He didn't want to drive. Okay, lost my key before the test. Got confused with gas pedal and brakes. <laughs> that can happen, Jane. They said pull over by that tree, but they didn't say which one. <laughs> when the instructor asked if I like donuts, I found the nearest parking lot and did donuts. <laughs> right. Have you ever met Charles Stanley? And asked, no, I haven't. No, I have not. I love him. He's a great, great teacher. But no. That should have been the verse that came to your mind. Yes. When you encountered the cheesecake on your fridge. <laughs> no, the one that hit me was, you know, do not worry about tomorrow. Matthew 6. The instructor didn't like my two-footed driving, one foot on brake and one foot on the gas. <laughs> that's the first time I drove a car. I thought that's what you do. My car blew up. 
Forgot where I parked. I couldn't find the car. Okay, let me ask you this quickly while you're doing it. How many of you can drive stick shift? Because that's how I learned to drive a car. Stick shift. All right, who drives stick shift? Forgot where I parked. I couldn't find the car. The driving instructor asked me to do a three-point turn before he got uh, into the car, so I did a three-point turn over. <laughs> If you can't find them, grind them. <laughs> I had trouble shifting gears. <laughs> Me, Lily, drives a stick shift. I can, but it's been a long time. Me, I can. Becky Ottenberry can. Matthew said, I wish. Man, if you want to. Now they're making cars with like, but you don't need a clutch. Like my car have a manual gear, but eh, you never use it. But if you... The old cars with the shift, you know, the, what do you call it, the clutch. Melissa said, I don't, I didn't drive at all, but when I did learn, I used automatic, like, I can drive stick shift, Kathleen, all right. Never mind, me, I wish. Let's see, who can drive stick shift? Come on, people. I actually learned to drive with one. Yeah. I can drive stick shift. We had a 58 MGA and a 59 bug guide Sprite. They were fun. Yeah. Parallel park. Great. Didn't see the fire. Hydrant. <laughs> That's why you failed. None to teach me. I never had access to a stick shift car. Yeah. It's hard to find them. I'm not good driving a stick shift. My friend Robert told me to drive a stick shift. Didn't like it. Yes, I broke the clutch. It's hard. You know, I'm glad it's out to have automatic. It's so hard to text and and shift at the same time. 18, year old, 18 years ago, I drove stick but never cared for it. Right? I broke the clutch. Daniel, Michael Curry, how are you? I first drove an automatic when I got married. I was 30. Oh. Right. Welcome, Daniel. Tell us where you're at. City and state. That's all we asked. Naz, have you started teaching Tally to drive? Not yet. She's only 13 and a half. And we're not looking forward yet. Could John and Carol drive? So. Try texting, shaving, and shifting at the same time. Well, you got to get both knees working for that, Art. Uh, let's see. I had trouble braking and accelerating because of my five-inch high heels. <laughs> That's Bobby, were you wearing high heels for your driver's test? Stay off the sidewalk, people. I drive on the sidewalk. I didn't know I wasn't allowed to park the car in the lobby. <laughs> San Diego, Daniel Curry from San Diego. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. One more California fan. That's awesome. All right. Do you know what time it is now? It is 8.15. This is the time you're sanitized. And when you sanitize and you share, we have 110 people watching right now. Can you please share this? Share it to your friends. Let them know. You know, even if you're on YouTube, you can share it. You can share it on uh, LinkedIn. I think it's, it's playing on different uh things uh let's see we have with us uh i prefer you to because i can listen to it in the background all right we have so 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 kiso how are you thank you for joining us on youtube all right right now we do something every night it's called the guinness book of world record this is your opportunity to read to read like me with your glasses out because I can't read with my glasses on. Because um, I don't like uh, bifocals. Anyway, the Guinness Book of Order. This is how it works. And the awards are amazing. The winnings are amazing and soft. And you need them. You need. I can't think of any human that doesn't need this. Unless. No, I can't think of any. <laughs> so, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to read you something from the Guinness Book of Order record. And what you're going to do is you're going to give me three guesses. Don't ask Siri. Don't ask Alexa. Just uh, give me your answer. Guess. The closest one to the number will win it. And I'm going to give you like uh, ranges. So you don't have to guess just like out of the blues. 
All right, my beloved wife is here. Okay. <laughs> Uh, because I said, look, ma, no hands. <laughs> and then demonstrated my hidden talent. <laughs> Couldn't hear what he was saying, and he refused to speak up. Okay, today is National Pretzel Day. Did you know that? National Pretzel Day. And let's see, in El Salvador, on October 25, 2015, the largest pretzel was achieved by Industrias La Constancia, with its brand Pilsner El Salvador at CIFTO in Salvador, El Salvador. So the prism measured 29 feet, 3 inches long by 13 feet, 3 inches wide. So how much did it weigh? How much did it weigh? Over a thousand, under 5,000 pounds, even number. How about that? Over a thousand pounds, under five thousand pounds. It's an even number. Give me your three guesses, people. All right. <laughs> Maha failed because English is a second language. Instructor wasn't impressed with my knee only driving. I misunderstood the term drive by. <laughs> Let's see. I sanitized and shared too much during the test. <laughs> All right, couldn't hear what he was saying and he refused to speak up. Cause I said, <laughs> okay, let's see. Yes, we all need TP. 666 for Maha. It's over a thousand, baby. All right, under 5,000. How did you like Zion? Oh, she loved it. Siri and Alexa does not listen to me anyway. Probably because I have them turned off. It used, she used to answer, but I think... Alexa now finds out that, like, hey, he's doing his show. I better not bother him. But she used to respond. I thought he was in the car, so I took off. Alexa, stop. I guess she didn't learn. 4,666. Paul Garland said over 1,000. No, Paul, that doesn't. Welcome back. I think you were with us a long time ago. Just give us. Give us one guess. He can't say over a thousand because <laughs> that's funny. I hope, yes. Uh, Art said 4,998, 4,996, and 4,994. We're trying to find out what's the weight of the heaviest pretzel that made it to the Guinness Book of World Record. Amy said 1773. Uh, let's see. Sarah said, hi, Paul. Uh, Matthew said 1,233, 30, and 2,500. Melissa said 4,000. Rita said 3,222, 4,444, and 2,222. Jane said 1,200, 2,400, and 4,200. Um, let's see. Uh, Michael Ramirez said 48, 49, 22, and 4,600. Uh, Becky Vaux said 29, 76. 4788 and 1257. Paul said 1200, 1350, and 2000. That's a lot better, Paul. Maha said 1666, 2666, and 3666. Amy said 2443. Lily said 1300, 2300, and 3400. Amy said 4774. Elena said 1468, 2680, and 3246. I thought the instructor said. Fly by, not drive by. Becky said 1206, 1406, and 1606. Because I'm colorblind, instructor didn't like the ejection seat feature in my car. Catherine said 1200, 4800, and 2300. Bobby said 1240, 1344, and 1999. Michael said 1175. Oops, lost connection. Sorry, Catherine. Uh, Kathleen, the question is, give us three guesses. For the heaviest pretzel, what's the weight of the heaviest pretzel in the Guinness Book of World Record? It's in pounds. It's over a thousand pounds, under five thousand pounds. Michael Ramirez said 1776. Got lost. The rooster just wants the pretzel to share with, of course, Ruby. Naz, did you watch the Oscars? No, I didn't. I d I wasn't. I didn't even care to watch them. I don't know why. I did not drive fast enough during the high-speed chase. 
Instructor freaked out. The car started talking to him. Okay, let's see the guesses. Who is coming up with the guesses? Come on, give me your guesses, people, for the heaviest pretzel in the Guinness Book of World Record. Uh, let's see. Uh, who is the one who got it? I am reviewing the answers. Coming up to the answer. Okay, and... Uh, I think we have a winner sold. The instructor freaked out. I cursed her. <laughs> One of the ladies broke her nail today at work. Now she got to go to the nail shop. Oh, Melissa said 1500 2500 3000 Sold. One. No. <laughs> instructor didn't like me watching a video during the test. Okay, here's the answer, people. Let's see. Anybody on YouTube want to answer? Okay. Here we go. The largest pretzel was made in El Salvador. It's the heaviest one, and it weighed 1,728 pounds. 1,728 pounds. And the winner is Amy. Amy came up with, seven, even though Michael Ramirez came 1,776, Amy came up with 1,773. So she was closer to so 1,728. Wait, and if you don't agree with me, speak now or forever hold your peace. That means 1773 from 1728. What is that answer? Okay, let's see. 1773 minus 1728. That equals 45. 45. Did someone come up with 1600 something? That could be closer. I know. I have to do everything here. I am... Uh, all right, let's see. Come if someone came up with 1690, would win this because they're closer. 1666 Maha is not, and 45, nope, is still not as close as Amy. And uh, let's see, anybody else came up 1606? No, nobody came up with 1600 something large, 1680 or 90. Therefore, our winner is the lady that sees toilet paper every day at work and puts it in boxes and ship it in Amazon to people. You get to enjoy your personal toilet paper, Amy. It's yours. You can share it with Michael Ramirez if 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 you have to. He he does need it. So anyway, congratulations to the winners. You guys do you want to keep answering the question? Oh, it is eight twenty four right now. Uh, you know what we do? Amy won. Yeah, you better share with Amy. Congrats. Okay, guys. Uh, right now is 8.24. Normally, uh, we start the show at 7.30. At 8.23, we start asking you for your prayer request. We've been doing this for 200-some shows. So it's not something new. We've been doing it from day one. The goal is, like, we want you to laugh, but at the same time, we want to pray for you. We want you to know that there's people praying for you throughout the day. So you tell us your prayer request. If it's personal or private, you can say unspoken or you can message me. But we will pray for you. And uh, if you want to tell us what to pray for, just write it down. We will pray for you. Trust me, there's people here that will pray for you. And we've seen miracles happen and we've seen things happen. You know, a few days ago last week, a friend of Amy's and the wife of Mark who's with us, who was with us last Friday, you know, she went to be with the Lord and she had uh, a reaction to a COVID vaccine and she passed away and she, you know, we prayed for hus her husband and we're still praying for him. We have people that we pray for. Having issues with teeth and gums. We'll be praying for you, Matthew, and we'll be praying. I'll be praying for the other thing you asked me to. Uh, if you're late, let's see. Who else needs toilet? Uh, no. Oh, my Lord. Micah Ramirez. Look what you did. <laughs> Who needs prayers? Not toilet paper. I pray that everyone has pray toilet paper. That's that's the only statement where I will use the word pray and toilet paper together. No, no. Who needs prayers? Let us know right now. I have doctor's appointment in the morning. Bobby will be praying for you. 
Okay, at Amazon, the housekeeping dropped the toilet paper on the floor. Oh, okay. Where anybody needs prayer? Can you pray for one of my pastors? Yes, we can. He's been called to minister in Portland, Oregon. All right, we'll be praying for him, Michael. Sorry, Naz, you just cracked me up. It's fine. No, I was cracking up inside. Okay, so uh, uh, India is needing prayer. Yes, COVID really bad in India right now. So pray for these people. Pray for the people and the, the w ones that lost loved ones and the ones that are, you know, dealing with it. We Sometimes it, we don't pray for people overseas. We just sometimes we don't relate or we can't think of that, but pray for them. Pray for the persecuted churches all over the world. I work in the youth department at my church. Okay, Paul. And we have a young man who I can tell is searching. I pray that we can continue to point him to Christ. Amen. We'll agree with you. We'll pray with you, Paul. Remember, for the Father desire that all would come to know the knowledge of him. So that's God's desire as well. I stepped on a duplex nail. Ouch. Shane. And three four of, of it, three quarter of it went into my foot and ended up with a silly light, oh, extremely swollen, red, and barely able to walk. At the moment, for the past one and a half weeks, two different meds at the moment need this infection to go away so I can get back to work. We'll be praying for you, Shane, for your foot to heal, the inflammation to go. We'll be praying. Melissa said, pray for my sister to be saved and get off the streets. Amen. We'll be praying for her. Definitely will. Pray for our nation. Yes. Unspoken prayer also for Sarah. Amen. Amen. We'll be praying for you guys. Anybody else needs prayers? All right. Let's see if anybody on YouTube needs prayer. Uh, let's see. All right. We're praying for you guys. I want you to know it is... Um, I'm I'm reading Matthew 19. I'm in the book of Matthew for the last few months in the morning and I'm reading my, and I love the way how the Lord Jesus gave value and honor to women. In the in the in the Jewish days in the Hebrews uh, days in the Old Testament uh, you know anybody can divorce his wife for any reason. Just sometimes they say, you know, according to the Rabbi Hillel if if someone if your wife burns your breakfast or cooks your meal and it was burnt or bad that's grounds for divorce that's how the women in that culture didn't have a value in that religion also i lived in muslim countries and you know like it or not they, there's they devalue women you know when you when you're allowed to marry four when the women have half of the right as the man like let's say you own property you know your son will get one full half others not in every country in the middle east but this is you know the religion uh, itself the jewish religion and the muslim religions that have they didn't give honor to women but jesus gave honor to women he Gave the way. No one should divorce his wife. The two become one. In the beginning, God made them man and woman. And the two would become one flesh. And when Jesus rose from the dead, he chose women to go and send the greatest message in Christianity. Because if it wasn't for the re uh, resurrection, you know, our Christianity is false. Our Christianity is no good. So who takes the message to the people? It was Mary Magdalene and the other Marys. When he went to visit, he went Mary and Martha and their brother. I mean, that's unheard of to go to a house where the women, are non, not married women and, you know, and their brother. He gave value to women. He gave value to women. And you read it throughout the, uh, the New Testament. It's amazing. So just want to let you know, ladies, Jesus loves you. He values you, values you a lot. I love you guys. Thank you so much for another show, Michael. Thanking God for the Riscala family. What a blessing. There. You're a blessing to us, Michael. Thank you for what you do as a teacher. You're probably blessing a lot of people. Prayers for all. Thank you guys for joining us. Pray for my for Christian's cousin-in-law. Their family is expecting baby same time as Christian. All right, we're praying for both of them. 
Okay, thank you guys for this show, for the laugh. This is why why Jesus said about the verse was so crazy to his disciples, right? Thank you, Naz, for an amazing show. Great job. Continue praying for you. That's gig will show up. Thank you, brother. God used Rehab to help the spies. He used Deborah as a judge. Amen. All right. Praying for more gigs for now. Thank you. Good night, guys. Thank you so much for being with us. All of you, 107 people, 108 left in this show. Love you guys. Please let your friends know about this show. We'll see you tomorrow night, God willing, at 7.30 p.m. But before you do that, remember tomorrow at 2 p.m. on this channel, on all these channels that you're watching, we're going to have uh, Diana Batista, who lives in Thailand, in Pattaya, trying to fight sex trafficking and teaching men and women how to become hair dressers so they can get out of the business. You'll enjoy it tomorrow. Love you guys and good night.